Hello there, I've been gathering up some old favourites and new discoveries for a video celebrating black owned brands but there are so many products I want to mention I've decided to turn it into a new mini series. This video is sponsored by Squarespace as part of my new partnership with the company. I built my website matildaonvideo.com using Squarespace earlier in the year and I'll be continuing to build up a brand new blog post I'll talk you through later. Since the Black Lives Matter movement shook up the beauty industry and the way many of us think about the brands we support, I've been compiling this video behind the scenes and waiting for some orders to get to Australia from all around the world. As I mentioned, in recent weeks I realised I physically couldn't fit all of the products and brands I want to talk about into one video without it being an hour long, so why not split it into several videos instead? Starting with two of my favourite black owned brands, then sharing some skincare and hair companies, some more recent discoveries and plenty of minimal multitasking makeup bits that fit my beauty style perfectly. So many fantastic new finds to share. I wanted to start with Fenty Beauty and Pat McGrath Labs, not only because they're two of the most well-known black owned brands on the market so many of you might have some of their products in your makeup bags too but the aesthetics and mood and textures of their products fit really well together and my relationship with their products also dates back the furthest. I purchased my first piece of Pat McGrath Labs in August 2017. I looked up my original Net-A-Porter order and it was just before I started my channel and I bought my first Fenty pieces in January 2018. I remember that excitement too because the brand wasn't in my city yet and I finally got to see a stand full of Fenty on an interstate trip. Before we run through my favourites, something slightly technical I wanted to note at the start of this series is that some people may have slightly different interpretations of what makes a brand black owned. It can get a bit complicated in the fine print of a company's structure. For example, an indie brand founded by a black creative might grow and be bought out by a larger company or take on investors and partners that aren't black. Fenty Beauty, for instance, was developed from the outset as a partnership between Rihanna and the luxury giant LVMH, but it's generally considered to be black owned because Rihanna is credited as the founder and creator. The recent wave of blog roundups and articles and Instagram posts about black owned brands is really about highlighting black founders and supporting businesses that put inclusivity at the core of what they do. So that's certainly the spirit of my videos on this topic too. You can't have a conversation about inclusivity in beauty without beginning with Fenty. Rihanna's brand is an industry leader that championed diversity right from the start when it launched in 2017. It completely shook up everything we knew about shade ranges and really raised the bar for other brands. From 40 plus foundation shades to a greater variety of bronzers and blushes and lip products that suit deeper complexions. In a crowded market of celebrity brands, Rihanna managed to build a billion dollar business that still feels full of her personality and energy, not soulless or too big. Even though they do seem to launch new products at the speed of light, I can't keep up. I haven't tried Fenty Skin, but I'd love to hear if you have. In a recent video, I swatched all 10 shades of Fenty Slip Shine Sheer Shiny Lipsticks, but I'm not sure if they've made it onto my favourites list just yet. I've tried a lot more Fenty goodies since my first review in the early days of my channel, and I'm still testing out a few newbies, so I'm sure my favourites list will continue to change, but these are what I consider my classic Fenty product picks. Gotta start with Gloss Bomb. Her universal lip luminizer never seems to get bumped out of top spot on Sephora's lip gloss list. This is universally loved for its high shine and lightweight, comfortable, non-sticky feel. The strong scent, maybe not so universally loved, but I like it. Most people call it a peachy vanilla, but I think it's slightly sherbety. Originally, it only came in the shade Fenty Glow, a one shade fits all, shimmering rose nude, really lovely caramel sort of tone on me, but the family has grown a lot, so I'd love to hear your favorites. I like deep shades, so hot chocolate is another favorite, but I wish it was more pigmented, as rich as it looks in the tube. It really only just slightly tints my lips. Very early viewers might remember seeing this kilowatt freestyle highlighter duo in the shade Ginger Binge Moscow Mule. It might have been one of the first times I ever talked about making a product multitask on my channel. It's obviously designed to be a highlighter, but it's too deep for my skin, so I purchased it to be a perfect shimmery pink shadow combo. The left side is almost a creamy powder. It's definitely not loose and you have to swipe quite firmly to pick it up and the right is similar but shimmery. Both sides are actually a fairly similar peachy pink tone, but you can just add a bit of sparkle on top. The Matchstix Shimmer Skin Sticks were another one of my first Fenty products, heavily inspired by Violette FR and how she applied them on her cheeks and eyes. I do find these fairly matte compared to most of the other dewy stick blushes I use. As a result, they're a bit more long wearing, but the stick does feel quite firm so it can pull on the skin and it's best to swirl your finger or a brush around on top and apply from there. They're also shimmery as the name suggests, which isn't my preference for blush, but again, right from the start, I saw these as perfect 
multitaskers and love wearing them on my eyes. Beach Bum is only a fairly recent purchase, but this deep peachy pink has become an instant favorite for a quick eye look, really suits green eyes, and Radic, called a golden papaya, is more of a bold blood orange that makes a statement as a sunset eye look. I'll link the original Toby Henny tutorial that inspired me to try this color below. When the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blushes were announced earlier this year, I knew I was in trouble. I'm such a cream blush addict and this looked like just the kind of formula I can get behind, but I was trying to stick to my low buy and now two of the shades I've had my eye on have been out of stock for months. Still waiting for them to come back before I film a detailed review of this formula and the cream bronzer, but I had to include the shade Rosé Latte here. It's described as a soft bronzed nude and it's a beautiful reddy brown on me, the sort of rich terracotta I love swiping onto my eyes, dabbing onto my cheeks, and even patting a little bit onto lips too. This formula is much softer and creamier than her matchsticks, so it obviously won't last as long, but a natural fade into the skin is fine by me. Quick honourable mention to the Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm. One of you raved about it and you know I can't resist testing out a lip balm or 10, and this instantly impressed me. I love that it has a doe foot applicator. It reminds me of one of my favourite nourishing glosses, the By Terry Balm de Rose Tube, but this feels more creamy and light and less glossy than that. Just super smooth and so nice to swipe on. Nowhere near as heavily scented as her other lip products either, but there's a little bit of vanilla to it. She just launched tinted versions of these two, so let me know if you've tried those and if the scent is the same or different. Moving on to Pat McGrath Labs, founded in 2015 by Pat McGrath, one of the most influential makeup artists in the world. She's known as the mother of the industry and in her 25 year career, she's been the creative genius behind countless magazine covers and campaigns, hundreds of high fashion runway shows, several luxury cosmetic brands, Armani Beauty in the 90s and Gucci Beauty's first collection and her own line of vibrant makeup too. I obsessed over her runway work as a teenager. Fashion was my first love long before beauty and she was such an integral part of that world. Although she's known for really edgy editorial creations, she can also do the most beautiful, natural, fresh faces and her products can be applied in whichever way you like. My first Pat McGrath purchase was what was called the Skin Fetish Illuminator Kit. This three piece set with a fluffy buffing brush, an iridescent powder and a double ended highlighter stick I filmed in a very early unboxing video. This stick has gone on to become one of her most famous products. It doesn't look like this anymore, it's had a makeover in a white and gold tube, but I think this nude shade might be the same as the new nude. One end is a creamy, pearly champagne highlight with a touch of pink, it's not too golden, really easy to blend and apply a light layer or build for more intensity. And the other end is a balm, completely clear so you can swipe it onto your cheeks for a very natural glow, on your eyes for a glossy lid look, or use it to make powder products more creamy. So such a great idea to have two products in one. My all-time favourite product from her brand and one of my all-time favourite sheer lipstick formulas full stop is the Lip Fetish Balm. Yes, it's called a balm and although it's really comfortable and balmy obviously, I don't find it as soft or emollient as most tinted balms and the bullet looks and feels firm like a lipstick so it goes in the sheer lipstick column for me. It's just perfect, balmy, barely there, but actually reasonably buildable. Wild Cherry is a perfect, easy wash of red, more of a pinky raspberry red than a really bright cherry red though. And Flesh 3 is a beautiful, rich, plummy brown. These seem to be out of stock a lot these days, so please don't tell me they're being discontinued. Don't you dare. One of my best beauty finds in 2019 was her Lust Lip Glosses. They were in my Makeup Favourites video last year. My renewed love of lip gloss has been well documented on my channel and this is easily one of my favourite formulas in my collection. So luxuriously smooth and creamy and comfortable, not sticky, but super pigmented too. I don't know how I only walked away with two of these when the whole range is amazing, but Flesh 6 and Flesh 4 were my picks. Flesh 6 is actually the lighter colour, a rich rosy brown, and Flesh Four is a gorgeous, deep, chocolatey colour. So much shine, they get me every time. Pat McGrath Labs is arguably most famous for its decadent eyeshadow palettes, and although I haven't splashed out on any of these, I was so glad she launched her Idols Single Shadows in 2019 because I've been able to build my own mini palette and my ideal colour combination. These are super smooth, buttery pressed powders that pack a punch. Rose Venus is a beautiful, shimmering rose pink, as seen on Millie Bobby Brown in her pink Stranger Things 3 premiere outfit, and Crimson Fire is a shimmering warm red. Everything I want to work with for a washed out or really intense rusty shadow look that makes your eyes pop. 
To keep track of all of these favourites and finds from other brands I'll be featuring, I've created a black-owned brands blog post over on my Squarespace site, matildaonvideo.com. Think of it as a condensed version of the video series for you to refer back to if you just want to see the products I've mentioned in one place. The beauty of Squarespace is how user-friendly and quick and customizable their websites are. I quickly created these brand banners to break up the text with photos I took, and this video is easy to add in at the end. If you're a budding blogger or running your own brand and want to set up a website or an online store, Squarespace offer a free trial, then when you're ready to launch, you can head to squarespace.com slash Matilda for 10% off your first website or domain name purchase. I only covered two brands in this video and look how long it took, couldn't have done them all at once. I'd love to hear about your Pat McGrath and Fenty favourites. Were you a day one fan, discovered them more recently, or are you still looking for the right product to take the plunge? Please share your top picks and hits and misses in the comments. Looking forward to talking through more black owned brands with you soon. Thanks for watching, see you next time.